Clay ordered the cavalry soldiers to execute the sixth plan of military operation, fire in a straight line and attack. The general was surprised. Several horses carried gunpowder, and archers began to shoot. Cage began ordering his soldiers to get out of where they were standing. The arrows fired by Clay's soldiers hit the barrels of gunpowder and exploded. Cage called the boy a baby and said he was very cruel. In response to this, Clay said that this is the real war and realized that the general had not even thought about it in that way. On the one hand, the boy could allow the enemy to destroy all his cavalry, and on the other, he could sacrifice several hundred horses in order to defeat the enemy. Moreover, the death of the animals was not in vain, because the enemy cavalry suffered heavy losses. In response to this, the general said that he really underestimated the boy. He also added that, apparently, it will not work out in a good way. Cage warned the boy to prepare for a real battle. The general ordered his army to go forward and kill the enemy. The remaining 10,000 cavalry soldiers were still engaged in logging, so the boy could only rely on infantrymen in order to hold off the enemy. Cage decided that with such an arrangement of troops, he would level the enemy's armies to the ground in less than an hour. However, at this moment, a trap was triggered in which Cage's soldiers fell. The man did not expect this and could not understand when the boy managed to put it on. At that moment, the stone said that Cage's army had fallen into a trap set by Clay's army. Time was accelerated, so General Cage's losses amounted to 500 people, and a total of 740 people were wounded and killed. A total of 830 people were killed. Then the boy asked his opponent if he hadn't noticed that his soldiers were still engaged in logging. Of course, the rest of the soldiers were building defensive structures. The general realized that the boy had set a trap from the very beginning. He also realized that the boy had sent his soldiers to stall for time, and it was at this moment that the fortifications were built. After that, the general lost a large number of men and horses, and after that I also fell into a trap. Clay confirmed the man's words and said he was right. The general rolled his eyes and asked the boy if he really thinks that only he knows how to sacrifice pawns in the name of saving the chariot. The general ordered his army to regroup and go into battle. In response, the boy ordered his army to get a secret weapon right now. It was another trap. The general said that the boy is the first opponent because of which he has such heavy losses. He also added that even if the boy wins this battle, he has absolutely nothing to show off here. In response, the boy asked Cage if he really thought he still had a chance to win. Then the man laughed and told Clay that he wasn't the only one who could reason. And after that, the man ordered his army to destroy the shooting towers. Then the stone said that the game was over and Clay's army had won. The general was shocked. He could not believe that he had lost and said that this could not be, because nothing had been decided on the battlefield yet and he did not agree that he should accept defeat. In response, the stone said that Cage's entire army went on the attack, and the barns in the rear were destroyed. The man shouted angrily that this could not be. He couldn't figure out when his opponent's troops managed to slip through. In response, the boy said that when his cavalry retreated, he managed to hide a couple of knights, and after the entire enemy army went into battle, of course Clay's soldiers began to act. The man could not believe that he had really lost. In response to this, the boy said that unfortunately it is. After a while, the man bowed and said that he would admit defeat and asked Mr. Clay to accept his bow. In response, the boy said that if his father found out about it, he would kill him, so he asked the man to get up as soon as possible. Cage told the boy that he had put a spoke in his wheels many times, but Clay always remained the same patient and the man fully admits this. He also added that now the boy really is the best general of the continent, and he, Cage, will now be his most loyal servant. After a while, the herald walked around the city and told everyone that Clay Longsu had won all the battles and even defeated General Cage, and now Clay Longsu is the best general on the continent, and the best general in Stormwind. Then people began to feast and drink to the strongest general. The boy thanked his grandfather and said that if not for his plan, the boy would not have been able to enlist Cage's support. In response to this, the grandfather laughed and said that in this case the most important thing is to rely on your own strength, otherwise it would not have been this grandfather who would have transferred his grandson to a complete route. At this time, the man was approached and a message was passed from the palace. Grandfather unfolded the scroll and began to read. The boy noticed the concern on his grandfather's face and asked him about what was written in the scroll and what happened. Then Grandpa read out what was written on the paper aloud. Taking into account Clay's success, the king gave him permission to create his own division called the Mad Dragon, numbering 30,000 people. Cage was also appointed the first duke of the kingdom and he will become the commander of the Blue Lightning Legion. The boy was very surprised when he heard the last words. The boy's mother was very happy, 
but could not understand what kind of emotions were on the face of the boy's father and grandfather. She asked them why they were not happy, because it should be nice that Clay was allowed to have his own army. In response to this, the boy said that the division should consist of 100,000 people, and the king allowed him only 30,000. He also added that Cage is his subordinate, but the king gave him the title of Duke. In other words, the king did everything to leave General Cage in Stormwind. Grandpa said that the king kind of rewards the boy, but in fact only limits, but now Clay can at least form his own army. Grandfather also added that in the end the king gave the order to come to him after he had finished training the troops. The man told his grandson that he had received the status of the best general, but this is only the first step, because the next step will be a journey to the Holy See, and this will be a real challenge for the boy. The king was riding in a carriage and he was ill. Next to him was Bill Shisson, the Chancellor of Stormwind. He calmed the king and asked him to be patient a little longer, because very soon they would arrive in Carter. After that, the man looked out the window and shouted that they needed to go a little slower, because it would be very bad if his majesty got hurt. In response to this, Peru said that they must get to Carter before nightfall, otherwise they would have to spend the night outdoors, which is quite dangerous and the chancellor should take better care of his dear king, because he has to be patient a little longer. Bill Shisson got angry, but didn't have time to say anything. After that, Peru turned to Clay and noted that he feels quite calm and confident, but the king looks like he will spit out all the insides soon. After that, the man laughed. In response, the boy said that after everything the king had done to him, Clay just couldn't help but make him suffer a little. After that, the boy ordered the drivers to speed up and rush to Fallow at all times. Peru obeyed the order. Senia was next to the boy. She turned to her brother and asked him if they would really be in danger if I didn't get there before nightfall, because the girl was a little scared. In response to this, the boy said that they need to pass through the city of Felu, which is located in the kingdom of Carter, and then cross the sea monastery and only after that they will arrive at the Holy See. Now there is a truce between Stormwind and Carter, so there is nothing to worry about, but excessive caution will not hurt because attacks are not always carried out apologies. At that moment, Peru called out to young Mr. Clay. He said there was a fallow ahead. The boy said it was good news in order to move forward. After a while, they arrived in the Carter kingdom. It was gloomy and dark, and there were many dead executed people hanging in the streets. Senia was surprised at what was happening. I couldn't understand how, because it's very cruel. In response to this, the boy said that the King of Carter is famous for his tyranny and cruelty since internal unrest and uprisings are quite a frequent thing here. The boy said that if he had been born in this kingdom, he would have personally killed the king. Some time later, the boy and his majesty arrived at the royal palace, which was located in the capital of the kingdom of Carter Fallow. The king laughed and greeted his dear friend Edward and said that he had missed him very much. He asked his friend about why he looked so tired and assumed that something had happened to him. In response to this, the man said that everything was fine with him and he was strong as always. It was just that the kingdom's road was quite bumpy. But because of such trifles, the king was not going to refuse to have a drink with his friend and remember the old days. In response to this, King Carter laughed and invited his friend to the table. After that, the man turned to his children and told them to deserve good service to the great king of Stormwind, who grants peace and tranquility to the borders of their kingdom. The man's three daughters sadly and submissively bowed their heads and began to carry out their father's order. One of the princesses of the Carter kingdom was named Emilia. She came up to his majesty and greeted him. The second princess was called Charlotte. She also approached the king and thanked him for protecting the borders of their state. The third princess, whose name was Camilla, also approached the king and said that she and her sisters would take good care of him. Two girls hugged the king and the third said that they had prepared fine wine and the best entertainment programs for his majesty. King Carter laughed and praised his daughters. At that moment, he heard some whispering behind his back. It was Senia who asked her brother about why the princesses were doing this. In response to this, the boy said that this is already an established tradition, and they do it in exchange for peace, and although it is vulgar, but they have no right to interfere. Then the King of Carter approached the girl, took her by the hand and called her a beautiful young lady and asked if he could be honored to know her name. Then the King spoke up and said that this was the adopted daughter of the Longsu family named Senia. He also added that apparently King Carter liked the girl and since his three precious daughters will accompany him, the girls will be quite lonely at the banquet, but she can communicate with King Carter. And these words angered the boy. At that moment, the king grabbed the girl's hand even tighter and said that she had a beautiful name and ordered her to come closer to him. The girl was hurt by how tightly the man held her hand and she began to cry. 
Then Clay intervened and took the king's hand away from his younger sister. He turned to King Carter and asked him to behave with dignity otherwise he would not stand on ceremony. In response, the man contemptuously asked the boy about who else he was and said that the Longsu family had no right to threaten him. The king ordered the boy to get out and said that he is the lord of the kingdom and it is not Clay's business who the man chooses as his companion. From these words, the boy got angry and released his magic vines. The king got scared and ran back. One of the magic vines turned out to be very close to the face of King Carter. The man asked the boy if he really wanted to kill him. After that, the king turned to his friend Edward and asked him what it all meant. In response to this, the man laughed and said that this was the fifth child of the Longsu family and realized that his friend had not heard anything about the Scarlet Baron. The man also added that he could not control the boy, but if it were not for his long-standing strong friendship with King Carter, he would not have done anything. After that, Edward turned to the boy and said that his actions were more than enough to prevent a war from breaking out between their kingdom. He also added that the boy had gone too far and should apologize to his majesty. When Clay heard this, he got angry and said that if he really went too far, the king would have been dead a long time ago. Then Edward suggested that the king and Clay calm down a little and said that they could not solve this issue in a manly way. The king called the boy a brat and said that whoever he was, the Scarlet Baron or someone else, he still had to understand that it was a great courage to accept his challenge. The king said that each of them would send a fighter and it would be a life and death battle. In response to this, the boy said that he would be happy if he had the opportunity to deal with the king himself. Then the king got angry and ordered his cursed slave Pierre to come out. At that moment, a huge man who looked more like a monster appeared in the room. He let out a loud, high-pitched growl. The king said that this is the strongest gladiator of the Carter kingdom and his personal slave who will fight. After that, the king asked the boy what he had decided and added that if he was scared, he still had a chance to kneel and beg for mercy. Then the boy called the feast and said that they wanted to fight here. The man came and asked the young gentleman about who to fight, then the boy pointed to that big guy and said that he needed to be killed. After a while, they found themselves in the arena. It was announced that, Peru, a fighter of the Longsu family from the kingdom of Stormwind will fight against the gladiator Pierre from the kingdom of Carter. It was also announced that their battle would be to the death. After that, the man announced that the fight had begun. Peru said that he forgot his name, but noted that his opponent is very noisy. At that time, Senia and Clay were sitting in the stands. She asked her brother if the feast would be okay, because this guy Pierre is apparently very strong. In response to this, the boy said that the girl should just trust him and added that this Pierre is not at all a rival to the feast. However, the guy thought that it shouldn't be fast, because the prey needs to be driven slowly. At this time, King Carter was sitting next to them and shouted to his slave to kill the enemy. The boy thought that he had never liked this disgusting tyrant and how wonderful it was that such a great opportunity had appeared to remove him. Piru and Pierre grappled in a fight. The king shouted to his slave to push on. Then Edward said that both opponents were very strong and apparently it would be a long battle. At this point, Clay suggested that they place bets to pass the time. King Carter said it was a great offer and ordered his subjects to get ready to write it down. They began to do his bidding. The boy said that he would be the first to bet 5 million gold coins at the feast. He also asked his majesty if he would put less. The king was surprised at such a large sum and thought that it was equivalent to the revenue of the treasury for a whole quarter. The man could not understand why this boy had such self-confidence. At this time, the men were still fighting in the arena. The king looked at the battlefield and said that Pierre had the advantage and his victory was only a matter of time. Then he said that he was betting 10 million gold coins on Pierre. He also added that with the income of his kingdom, he can allocate such an amount. In response, it was filed and told his majesty that after deducting all expenses for the previous period, the amount remaining in the treasury is 10 million. Then the man laughed and told Edward that it was very good that he decided to invest money in his kingdom, because he's been having a hard time with it lately. In response to this, the man said that it was Clay who made the bet and she had nothing to do with him. At this time, Clay thought that the fish had swallowed the bait and had to wait. Then the boy ordered the feast to act and the men carried out the order. Peru started attacking Pierre with all his might and shouting about what a weakling he was and that he would show him what real power was. The opponents began to fight. Then Peru turned into a big monster. King Carter was surprised and could not understand what had happened, because now Peru looked like a completely different person. Eduard said that the berserker got angry. However, the king still couldn't figure out what was going on. Then Edward said that in this state no one can control his strength. The kings decided that they urgently needed to leave the stands because Peru had gone mad. 
The berserker smashed everything in its path, the king's palace and his treasures. The king's subjects grabbed his hand and said that they needed to run away as soon as possible because the berserker had gone mad. But in response to this the king only said that they needed to stop the monster and called his subjects useless idiots. In response to this, the knight said that they were absolutely without a strong one here and told his majesty to leave soon. He also added that after the king left, he would immediately give the signal to the army. In response to this, the king said in surprise that while they were waiting for the arrival of the army, his palace would be completely destroyed. Then the king turned to the boy and said that it was all because of him and he should take responsibility for what was happening. In response to this, Clay said that he had nothing to do with it, because it was the king himself who proposed the duel and chose the place, and what is happening is absolutely normal behavior of a berserker in battle. Then the king came even closer to the boy and told him to stop the berserker, but in response to this the boy said that the brave Pierre had not lost yet, so the battle would continue. Then the king bowed and said that he would admit defeat. The boy asked the king if he had forgotten about the true purpose of this duel, because if he lost, he would apologize to his sister. The king was indignant, however, at this moment the feast struck another blow. Then the man agreed, knelt down in front of the girl and apologized, said that it was rude on his part. After that, he turned to the boy and said that he had already apologized and asked to stop this monster. After that, the boy ordered the feast to stop. The man followed the order and calmed down. The king was surprised at how quickly it happened. After that, he began to shout at the boy that he was a bastard because of him. He almost destroyed his palace. The man also added that the boy would have to pay for it. Then Clay replied that he had no problem paying for it because today he had earned more than enough to cover all the losses of the king. At that moment, Peru suggested to the young gentleman that, moreover, he had also earned a decent amount. Then the boy turned to his majesty Carter and told him to deduct from the boy's winnings the amount he deems necessary and the rest can be transferred to his subordinates. After that, the boy turned around and left saying that it had been a hard day, and he went to rest. The king was angry. He once again called the boy a bastard and said that he had done something similar to his palace, forced him to kneel, and also took away the money. Then Edward laughed and told the man that now he finally realized how good Clay was. The man also added that he had not yet met a man who could become a worthy opponent for him, and in response to this the king said that he had never met someone who would allow himself to treat him like that. Suddenly, the king narrowed his eyes slyly and thought that he had a plan. After a while, the boy was sleeping in bed. It was already the middle of the night, but he woke up abruptly from the fact that he heard some song. Sleepy Clay followed the sound. He determined that the song was coming from the room. The boy opened the door and saw a confused third princess Camilla there. The girl was scared and asked about who opened the door. The boy awkwardly scratched his head and apologized to the girl. He said he just followed the sound. Clay asked the girl if she was the third princess Camilla. The answer to this, the girl said that she was just practicing because very soon there would be a ceremony for the election of the goddess. The girl also added that she was so carried away that she did not keep track of the time. She bowed apologized and said that she did not want to disturb the young gentleman. In response to this, the boy said that Camilla sings wonderfully and she does not need to apologize. The girl was embarrassed and asked Clay if it was true. In response, the boy said that this was definitely the best song he had ever heard, but he did not know that they were singing at the election ceremony. In response to this, the girl said that it was not just a song, but an anthem. She also added that young girls who possess light magic will climb the holy mountain and will sing songs praising the goddess. If the song reaches the heart of the goddess, it is an angel to descend from heaven and the performer will receive a blessing and become a goddess. As soon as this happens, she will become the ruler of God, and her status will be the same as that of the Pope. The girl talked about it with a visit and ecstasy. In response to this, Clay said that the girl sings just amazing and she will definitely become a goddess. However, Camilla replied that it was not so easy, because otherwise this place would not have been vacant for 50 years. The boy was surprised when he heard such a large figure and asked if the previous goddess had really died. The girl said that of course not. It's just that the goddess automatically loses her status upon reaching the age of 45 or when she gets married. After this ceremony, the election will take place regularly until a new goddess is chosen. Then the girl said that Clay's sister should also take part in this and asked the boy if he didn't know that. Then the boy said that their king decided not to take part this year. He also added that he found that there are a lot of people in other countries who want to become saints. In response to this, Camilla said that the girl who would become a goddess would have her own legion of guardians. In many small countries, the goddess is equated with the protector of the whole country. 
The previous goddess was Lena West from Stormwind, the boy's grandmother. Poets reason his majesty Edward and refused to participate this year. The boy was very surprised that his grandmother was a goddess and he finds out about it only now. Camilla was also surprised that the boy didn't know about it. In response, Clay said that when his family mentioned his grandmother, it was only about her great achievement, killing 10,000 enemy mercenaries in one night. So she got the nickname Blood Demon, but who would have thought that she was a saint? In response to this, the girl said, how then could the legendary Lena get such a nickname? In response to this, the boy said that this was their family's past. The girl looked at Clay questioningly. When the boy said that his grandfather badly injured his leg in the war, and your uncles went to his rescue, but were killed by mercenaries. The boy's grandmother could not bear the pain of losing her sons, so in just one night, the entire group of mercenaries, including the great archmage and the commander of the holy sword, was destroyed. The culprit of all this, the sword god Albon, was also supposed to be her victim, but the sudden appearance of the Pope saved him. The boy also added that his grandmother was incredibly strong. Then why did she need this status of a saint? The answer to this, the girl said that it was just incredible. The children say that all the goddesses were not only outwardly beautiful, but also invincible in battle. It turned out that this was true. The girl also added that if only she was as strong as Ms. Lena, then she wouldn't have to do what she doesn't like. The boy reached into the pocket of his jacket and pulled out something shiny. He held out the girl's hand and said that it was for her. Camilla asked the boy about what it was. In response to this, Clay said that it was an amulet that he made himself and he blessed it. He told the girl to put it on when she sang and he would protect her from any external interference. The girl thanked the boy and asked him why he was helping her. In response to this, Clay said that he was doing this because he could not understand Carter. The boy could not understand how his father could even send his daughters to serve guests. He also added that Camilla looks like his sister and he really hopes that she can become a goddess and finally be able to protect herself. After that, the boy left and said it was time for him to go to bed. He thanked the girl for letting him hear her wonderful singing. After that, the girl looked at the amulet that she was holding in her hands and said that Mr. Clay is a very sensitive person and she hopes that next time they will still have the opportunity to chat. However, after that, an insidious smile appeared on her face. The next day, everyone boarded the ship. Senia told her brother that if they sailed on an ordinary ship, it would take several days, and so they would get to the Holy See in just half a day. In response to this, the boy said that it was all thanks to magic. After that, Clay turned to the feast and said that he should not be seasick. In response to this, the man rolled his eyes and said that the berserkers had nothing to do with it. After that, the girl looked at the wizards who accelerate the movement of the ship. After a couple of seconds, the ship moved at a tremendous speed. The younger sister of the boy and Peru did not expect that the speed would be so great. The boy shouted that they were already close to the holy capital. Some time later, an old man sat on the throne in the harbor of the holy capital. He told his subordinate that the dear guests had already arrived and they should prepare to receive them. And the servant obeyed his order. That old man was Cardinal Robert. He said that Lena's grandson was rumored to be coming too. He also added that he has a feeling that it will be something very interesting. King Edward was descending from the deck of the ship. He turned to Victor and was surprised that he decided to meet them in person. The man noted that they had not seen each other since graduation and tried to remember how many years had passed since then. In response to this, the man said that he was no longer the vice chairman. He also added that he heard that his favorite students were coming and could not help but greet them. Clay watched on the sidelines as the kings greeted their former teacher and thought that the vice chairman helped his students become kings and they in turn helped him take the post of bishop. This is really an ideal scheme. After that, Edward called Clay to him. The king said that he was Lena's grandson and the youngest son of the dragon blood family. Edward told the boy that Cardinal Robert Kayo was standing in front. The boy Poe greeted the cardinal. In response to this, the old man said that the young man was very polite and took after his grandmother. After that, he asked Clay if this visit to the holy capital was his first. The boy answered positively. When the old man said that Clay could walk around the city and look around, because they, young people with old people, would be incredibly bored. However, he told the boy to be sure to return by the beginning of the duels. The old man also told the boy's younger sister to look into a magic shop called Divine Light, because there you can find a lot of interesting things. Clay realized that the cardinal thought that Senia would take part in the election of the goddess. After listening to the advice of the old boy, his younger sister went to the store. On the way to it, the girl very happily shouted that it was just amazing because she had never seen a magic shop with such a large selection, and this is truly a holy capital. The girl could not choose what to buy for her. Her eyes were running away from a large selection. 
However, Clay told his younger sister that these are just ordinary goods in which there is nothing interesting. He told Senia that they should go upstairs and see what was there, because in his experience the best things are not put in front of everyone. The girl agreed and went with her brother towards the stairs. The boy told his younger sister that the higher they climb, the higher the quality of the goods and the higher the price for them, so they decided to go straight to the top. However, they met two guys on the stairs. One of them, a tall, dark-haired man, was called Bright Siwan. He asked out loud about where this hillbilly came from and asked the boy if he really wanted to go up to the top floor. The young man told Clay that he didn't seem to fully understand where he was. Behind him was a slightly shorter guy with white hair. His name was Clin Siwan and he was apparently his brother. The guy was laughing. Clay replied the young man that apparently some people consider themselves better than others. Hearing this, Clint got angry and asked the boy if he knew who was in front. He also asked the boy about how he dares to get involved with the Siwan family. In response to this, Clay said that he didn't care what family he was from. At that moment, the store's security guard ran up and began asking the guys to stop the showdown. Then the man turned to the guard and asked him about where he was looking, because they let any rabble into the store who don't even know who the Siwans are. The guy ordered the guard to throw Clay out of the store. The guard approached the young master and said that he had no right to offend the members of the Siwan family, because the father of Mr. Bright and Mr. Wedge is the head of the Legion of Guardians of the Holy Capital. In response to this, the boy said that he didn't care who the Siwans were and the guard should first ask him about who he was. Then the guard got angry and ordered his subordinates to simply remove this child from the store. The servants began to carry out the order. The boy told his younger sister that apparently he needed to teach these people a lesson. Senia only told her brother to be careful. At that moment, a tall man entered the room and ordered to stop it. He said that peace and quiet brings money, and they arranged a showdown here, the noise from which can be heard even on the top floor. This man turned out to be the owner of the Divine Light store named Cyan Sila. The guard ran up to his boss and said that it was all because of the boy, pointing his finger at Clay. The man was surprised by what he heard. Clay suddenly smiled and told Mr. Cyan Kila that he didn't treat regular customers very well. The man recognized the boy and was very surprised that Mr. Clay came to his store. The man immediately ran to the boy and said that he did not know that the boy was going to visit his store. He also added that if his informants, he would have met Mr. personally. The man told Clay to just tell him if he needed anything. In response to this, the boy said that he was in the capital for the first time and did not know that Mr. Sayan Sila owned this store. Then the men turned on the brothers and calling them idiots said that they almost offended his best client. The guard started apologizing. After that, the man told the brothers that, as he had said earlier, the things they were interested in were not available. After that, he apologized and said that he needed to receive a dear guest. The man again approached Mr. Clay and invited him to go to a quiet room upstairs and continue the conversation there. In response, the boy said that since he was in this store, he asks the man to show him all the best. Then the shop owner smiled and said that they had recently received magic gold and several instruments of light, and he would now show everything to the boy. At this time, the brothers, still angry, watched the store owner climb to the top floor in a place with Clay and his younger sister. They said that the shopkeeper was a fool because he had just told them that he didn't have any instruments of light. But then what was he going to show the boy? They also thought that the girl who walks next to Clay came to the capital to participate in the goddess election ceremony. And if Cyan Sila sells the weapons of light, it will not be in favor of Lydia. The blonde guy told his that they had to go. However, the man thought about it, because it seemed to him that he had already heard the name Clay somewhere before. However, after a few moments, the guy said that it didn't matter, because the Siwan family had never been afraid of anyone and they would get the weapon of light. Senia saw beautiful artifacts on the upper floors. Cyan Sila told Mr. Clay that these were jewels from the collection number 1079 and 1465. He asked the boy to look at them. These items were called illusory gold and the longing of the king of the light tigers. The boy said it was really worth his attention. Clay picked up the illusory gold, which was otherwise called the gold of the gods. It was an indispensable item for making divine artifacts. The boy asked the store owner about how much he wanted for this thing. In response to this, the man said that he did not dare to set a price for the boy. Then Clay gave his younger sister an artifact of light and said that it would suit her. The boy asked his younger sister if she liked this artifact. One of the sellers decided that the front is a rare simpleton, and he needs to take advantage of this opportunity. He told the boy that he had excellent taste and set a price of 30 million gold coins for the illusory gold and 10 million for the longing of the king. The store owner was surprised by such audacity, and Seja was shocked by such prices. She asked the seller about why they are so expensive. 
In response to this, the man said that it was inexpensive, because no cheap artifacts are simply worthy of a girl. Flay turned to Mr. Saiyan Sila and said that he really knows how money is made, because the price of artifacts doubled and the second as soon as they fell into his hands. In response to this, the man began to awkwardly deny and said that Mr. Clay was a big joker and he would certainly give the boy a great discount, because this was his first visit to the capital. The man said that the illusory gold would cost the boy five million and the longing of the king of the light tigers two million gold coins. The boy was surprised by such a big discount and asked the man if Leon would not suffer terrible losses because of this. The seller told his boss that they would work themselves into a minus if they sold things at that price. In response to this, the man got very angry and said that his subordinates did not understand anything about business and he did not dare try to fool Mr. Clay. The man announced that from that day on the seller would not have any salary increases and kicked him out. The man fell to the lower floors and met one of the Siwan brothers there. The guy asked the man about what was going on there. In response to this, the seller replied that he did not understand what the boss was thinking at all, because he was going to sell the illusory gold and the board of the King of Light Tigers at the purchase price to that guy Clay. The guy was outraged. His brother asked him about what kind of longing the King of the Light Tigers is, is it really that you are powerful? In response to this, the guy said that Lydia had said that this artifact could significantly affect the results of the goddess's election ceremony. 1,200 years ago, a pair of light tigers in the mountains should have had offspring, but they were condemned by a group of monsters. The father of the cubs, the king of the light tigers sacrificed himself and died along with the enemies, but his power attracted the deities of light Turim. But by that time the king of the tigers was already dead. Fortunately, the tigress gave birth to a healthy baby. The tigress handed the baby to Turim and decided to die with her lover, leaving behind two magic cores. Turim was touched by the love and devotion of the two substances and created the longing of the king of light tigers from the magic cores. This is the source of the love of two light tigers. The girl picked up the artifact and said that it was very touching and sad. The owner of the store turned to the young gentleman and said that he was well aware, because he really deserved to become its owner, unlike you fools from the Siwan family. The boy replied to the owner of the store that he had a great hanging tongue and his sister liked it, so they would take this artifact. Senia began to tell her brother that she did not need to buy this thing for her, because it is very precious. In response, Clay told her not to be stupid, because she shouldn't think that her brother can't afford to give his younger sister such a gift. Besides, the store owner will sell it to them at a great price. The boy put the necklace on the girl and said that he saw how touched she was by this story, so she should take care of this necklace, because it is a symbol of the love of two light tigers. A girl with eyes full of happiness and hope said that she would definitely take care of him. At that moment, the brothers burst into the room. One of them shouted that Cyan Sila was just an idiot, because he did not show these treasures to them. The guy suggested that the store owner underestimates the Siwan family. In response to this, the seller said that the buyers have already been determined so there is nothing he can do about it. Clay thought that the owner of the store is a cunning fox because I want to dump all the responsibility on him. The second brother told the boy to give them the longing of the king of the light tigers. In response, the boy said that if they want to take away his own thing from him, then their family is no worse than stray dogs. The guy got angry and said that Clay was finished because now he would show him who was in charge in the holy capital. In response to this, the boy said that it was a wonderful coincidence because he also wanted to show him what happens when you get involved with Clay Longsu. The shop owner turned to Mr. Clay and begged him not to fight in this room, because there are treasures in it that should not be damaged in any case. The girl thought that the treasures should be expensive if they are damaged, then her brother will have to pay for everything. However, at that moment the boy had already released his magic vines from the ground. But before they could get to at least one of the brothers, the blonde-haired one began to scream. He couldn't understand what was going on and said he couldn't move. The second brother realized that this was a fifth-rank light magic called Light Bonds. The guy realized that it was a girl to do it. Senia said that it was dangerous and it was impossible to let her brother spend even more money. My brother was shocked that this little girl did it. At that moment, Clay approached this brother and said that he would not advise being distracted during the battle. Then the boy attacked both brothers. They were thrown back much further. The black-haired brother said that he was challenging the boy to a duel. In response to this, Clay said that it was too boring, but he accepts the guy's challenge anyway. In response to this, the angry man said that the boy would regret it. He also once again reminded that they were from the Savin family, and the boy must have forgotten about it, because their father is the head of the Legion of Guardians of the Holy Capital. 
After that, he turned to San Sila and said that he was a witness. The guy added that he was going to fight the boy for life and death, so then let him not detract from leaving him alive. The store owner was afraid that Clay was offered a duel and asked Mr. Clint if he knew who was in front. He said that this is Clay Scarlet Baron Longsu, who destroyed the entire Stormwind Guard and is also Lena West's grandson. At that moment, the second young man turned to his brother and said that it was not too late for them to retract their words. The boy was surprised by this and said that it was very interesting because initially they themselves insisted on a duel, and now they themselves give a back one. In response to this, the guy told Clay not to get conceited and not think that he was so cool, because their Siwan family is not inferior to him at all. He also added that the Holy Capital has its own rules for dueling, and they are some kind of barbarians to grapple with him right in the middle of the street. And the second brother added that exactly how the duel will take place is decided by the one who called the opponent, and they just haven't had time to think about it yet. In response, the boy said that it was too troublesome and asked about what was preventing them from fighting right now. At that moment, someone called young Mr. Clay. The boy turned around and saw that it was Uncle Joe. The man ran with all his might and was out of breath. The boy asked him about why the man ran here. In response, he said that General Dar's ship had already docked. He wants the boy to meet his old friend, and also that he should look at the battle of the armies of the states of Meglin and Carter as preparation for the upcoming battle. Clay thought about it and said that it was really reasonable, but he still had unfinished business. Then the guy said that he would show mercy and the boy would be released today. This angered Clay and he asked the guy about what he said. However, the brothers were already running away flashing their heels. They shouted that the boy would not get away with it. He should wait for a letter with a date and time and be afraid. The second brother added that the boy should consider himself lucky today. After that, Uncle Joe asked the boy about what kind of two idiots they were. In response, the guy told his uncle not to worry about it because they should go as soon as possible. The boy didn't want to keep his father waiting. After that, Clay threw a gold coin to Cyan Sila and told him to take care of his younger sister and pick up something worthwhile for her. The shopkeeper began to fulfill the request. Some time later, the boy and Uncle Joe arrived at the arena in the capital. Congratulations to the boy with his father. There was a man standing next to him, whom Dar was hugging in a friendly way. The boy's father said that it was his old friend from the academy, Prince Cessier from the Carter Kingdom named Dazzling Tiger. Also standing next to him was another man whom Dar introduced as General Inel. Cessier laughed and approached the boy. He asked if this boy really was the same Scarlet Baron. The man also added that he had heard that the boy had robbed his brother thoroughly when he was in the Carter Kingdom. Clay greeted the man by calling him Uncle Cessier. The boy said that he really allowed himself such behavior, but asked the man to believe that it was not groundless. In response to this, the man said that he knows perfectly well what kind of person his brother is, so the boy should not worry about it. The man invited Clay to sit next to him. Clay greeted Uncle Enel and said that he knew of his military exploits. He also said that he had heard that a man had risen from a slave to a general, and said that he was a real role model. Then the man said that the owner of Borats himself knows his name and it is a great honor for him. Then the boy's father got angry and told his son that General Enel was his first mentor. He told his son not to try to lull his vigilance with sweet speeches, but rather to remember everything a man says well. Clay's father also added that he called his son here so that he could see and understand what a real soldier is. The boy said that he understands all this, but he is just a little surprised, because King Carter only arrived in the capital today but he will already participate in the battle, and his opponent will be such a strong opponent as Meglin. The boy said he thought it was a little unfair. Seeing his father's reaction, the boy realized that he had said something wrong. In response, the father said that this is not justice has been going on for hundreds of years and has become a tradition. Clay was very surprised and asked his father why it happened. At that moment, King Carter's brother started talking and said that it was a shame for the whole kingdom because it was because of these rules that Carter had to lose to Meglin. Then the boy said that it wasn't fair and asked why they should fight at all, because it was like sending Carter's soldiers to certain death. Then the man said that the Meglin Empire is several times stronger than the Carter Kingdom, but for many years they have not been able to annex it, and all this is thanks to the efforts of the Iron Legion, which guards the border front. The existence of a kingdom weak in comparison with Meglin right under his tray has always been regarded as an insult to the honor and dignity of the empire. Unable to gain an advantage on the battlefield, Meglin decided to apply economic pressure as an expression of their discontent. After the incident, the Carter Kingdom faced famine and huge financial difficulties. In order to survive, the Carter Kingdom uses this opportunity to lose to Meglin every time to calm his anger a little. 
This story angered Clay and he said it was stupid. The boy also added that economic pressure always works both ways. Of course, Carter is suffering losses due to the economic blockade of Meglin. But Meglin, of course, is under pressure because of this. The boy also added that Meglin will not be able to rely on this method forever, and the Carter kingdom needs to demonstrate a firm position and not try to please them. In response to this, the general said that young Mr. Clay understood everything perfectly, unlike his majesty. Carter's brother angrily said that the aristocracy of his kingdom only cares about the loss of their money and the conditions of the economic blockade by Meglin and they don't care about the long-term development of the country, which is just terrible. The general told Cessier that he had always been concerned about this, which is why the general came today so that his brother could see what he would do with this Meglin. Clay asked General Inel if he, too, would personally participate in the battle. The general responded positively and added that despite the fact that he was already old, he would not lose. Then the boy gave Uncle Inel a potion that improves physical characteristics. He told the general to distribute them to the soldiers and teach Meglin a lesson. The general said that some soldiers pray to the gods to help you win, but such methods are blasphemy for a soldier. In war, all means are good, but even here we should not forget about honor. After a while, the man announced that the battle was about to begin. The side on the offensive was Meglin and the defending side was the Carter Kingdom. General Enel said that he was going to fight and asked to wish him good luck. He also asked the God of Light to be on his side. After that, it was announced that they would soon find out what strategy both sides would use. First it was the turn of Meglin's army. They announced that they were sending average fighters to fight Carter's army, or even it was too easy for them to win. On the other side was Carter's army. They are confident, even if they are all soldiers of the lowest rank. Clay was outraged by such a gap in strength and said that it was done on purpose. The boy also said that it was unfair and it was necessary to send troops of at least the same rank. The boy told Uncle Enel to give up the battle as soon as possible, because it is not worth such sacrifices. Then Uncle Enel said that he wanted to give the boy the last lesson that a soldier never retreats. After that, the general shouted that he was going to fight for Carter, for his land and let his kingdom prosper. The boy was outraged when he suddenly heard laughter next to him. He turned to the guy who laughed and asked him about how you can laugh watching an unfair battle, and said that this guy is crazy. In response to this, the guy said that he found it very funny, because this cute old man still says this about the kingdom that sent him to certain death. The guy also added that of course the guy standing in front of him is also ridiculous, because who would have thought that the famous Scarlet Baron Clay would be so sensitive and emotional. The boy was surprised that this guy knew his name and asked him about who he was. After that, the guy greeted the boy and said that he was the third prince of the Meglin Empire named Carl Meglin. He also added that the boy had most likely heard of him. The guy added that he rarely initiates communication with anyone, so Clay should be grateful that he had such an honor. In response to this, the boy told the guy that he was a pretty self-confident prince. At this time, people from the stands shouted that Meglin would win. Then Prince Carl told Clay that it was just a performance where the weak are trying to please the strong, because everyone knows that Carter is waiting for defeat. In response to this, the boy said that he was not sure about it. He also added that with the support of General Enel, Carter's soldiers are well motivated. He also added that soldiers who are full of fighting spirit are not such an easy target. In response to this, the prince said that it was something like a death agony, no other way. At that moment, the bells rang and announced the beginning of the battle. Meglin's soldiers ran at Carter's soldiers with a battle cry. Clay Clay watched this and thought that rushing into the attack while not having any protection could lead to defeat. At this time, General Enel told his soldiers not to panic. He ordered Carter's brave men to split up and defend themselves. The boy thought that attacking head-on was not the best idea. It was better to go on the defensive and wait for a suitable opportunity to attack. At that moment, Prince Carl, who was sitting next to Clay, was shouting and supporting his army. He said to both attack and deal with the opponents as soon as possible. After that, he told Baron Clay that no matter how much he supported Carter's soldiers, it was all useless because they were doomed to lose. The boy thought that, apparently, the prince was not yet familiar with Enel's skill. Clay thought that these idiots from Meglin were already surrounded and now was the best time to attack them. The boy shouted to Carter's army to surround the opponents. After that, they attacked Meglin's army. The soldiers were scared and said that their opponents were crazy. Clay supported Uncle Enel from the stands. The prince said that it was impossible and these soldiers from Carter to crazy because they are ordinary soldiers from a lower rank. However, Carl was even more horrified when he saw that this old man was Enel and had just used the power of the Holy Sword and the prince said that he had never heard of such people in the apartment. 
In response to this, the boy said that this was the effect of the absolute berserker potion. When the prince heard about the berserker potion, he said that the general was just crazy because it was like exchanging his life for strength. He also added that the Strieg had no more than 20 minutes to live in the best scenario. In response to this, Clay said that this was enough because he refused to accept the potion offered by the boy and chose this, since he protects the honor of the soldier at the cost of his life, including the honor of Carter. Then the prince laughed and said that it was just ridiculous because it was all useless. Then Clay told Prince Carl to listen. He asked the guy if Leon had heard any encouraging speeches addressed to the soldiers of Meglin. The principal listened and realized that everyone was shouting in support of Carter and telling them to destroy their opponents. The prince was indignant and could not understand what was happening. In response to this, the boy said that Carter's soldiers won even at the moment when they surrounded the enemy. Then the prince started shouting to his army that they were idiots and had to attack, otherwise they would disgrace Meglin. Then Army General Meglin ordered his soldiers to exert all their strength and attack because Carter's army would never retreat. But at that moment the enemy cut off the general's hand. The host of the duel said that this was definitely the most cruel and unfair duel of all, which he witnessed. At that moment, Army General Meglin asked General Enel if he really still wanted to fight, because he was the last of Carter's soldiers. In response to this, the old man said that even if he was the only survivor, they would still continue. Then the old man's opponent told the general that it deserved respect, but he did not understand why the man did not spare himself so much because this was not the first loss. Then the old man replied that that was why he could not allow his homeland to be defeated again. Even if it would be at the cost of his life, he still had to return his honor and dignity. In response to this, the old man's opponent said that he wanted to remind him once again that all this deserves respect. And he also added that they have exactly the same reason why they cannot afford to lose. After that, he said that they should show respect for each other's beliefs with a fair fight. Then the man shouted, for Meglin, attack. In response to this, General Enel shouted, for Carter, for a prosperous kingdom. After that, they grappled in the bayou and there was a strong explosion. Clay burst into tears because he thought General Enel was dead. However, it turned out that he was the only survivor. At first, Prince Carl thought it was a draw, but as it turned out, General Enel is still alive, so the victory was for the Carter kingdom. Then someone shouted to Baron Clay that he was wrong and Enel was dead. Then King Carter approached His Majesty Charles and said that as he could see they had lost, which meant Meglin had won again. Clay couldn't believe what he heard. He thought that this bastard wanted to devalue Uncle Enel's victory, which cost him his own life. Then the boy shouted that General Enel was still alive and asked everyone else to just take a look. He also added that even if nothing can be done to help him, at least his death will not be in vain. In response to this, King Carter turned to Clay Longsu and said that it was not for him, a citizen of another kingdom, to interfere in the affairs of his Carter kingdom. The king ordered Clay to be stopped. The boy was already heading to the arena, but he was stopped because they said he was from another kingdom. However, at that moment Carter's brother appeared, who said that unlike the boy, he had every right to enter the arena and drove the guards out of his way. The king tried to stop his brother Cessir, but he failed. Cessir told his majesty that he had long been tired of pretending to be a weakling. In response to this, the king said that Cessir was too brave and Enel had been dead for a long time. After a fight they did not wave their fists. Then Clay thought about how only such a man without you could become a king. The boy realized that he could not allow General Enel's sacrifice to be in vain. The boy thought that now the Sora of the two brothers is in the spotlight, so no one should notice that the boy is using magic. The guy released magic binds from the ground with a small amount of healing magic, which will allow General Enel to shout the last battle cry and that will be enough. At that moment, the general struggled to get up. The boy hoped with all his heart that he would be able to stand up so that everyone could hear the winner. As soon as the general stood up, someone from the stands shouted for everyone to look at the fact that General Enel was getting up and he was alive. This meant that the Carter Kingdom had won. The general barely stood up and shouted, Long live the Carter Kingdom. Then everyone in the stands screamed. After that, the general fell to the ground and finally died. People began to cry and thank General Enel for the victory of the Carter Kingdom. Everyone shouted that General Enel was their hero. Clay wished General Enel to rest in peace because he showed them true courage, as well as an example of how real heroes act. At that moment, his father approached the boy and told the boy that he had done a great job. All the people who were in the stands shouted that General Enel was their hero. Cecil approached the general's body, told him that he had worked hard and covered his body with a cloth. 
He also added that the Carter kingdom will never forget the general and his sacrifice. Cecil went up to his brother and said it was over. He also asked him if there was still any doubt that Carter had won this battle. At that moment, a man came up and said that he was not sure that the army of the Carter kingdom would be able to defeat Meglin in a real battle. Then King Carter approached this man and said that they could discuss what had happened. Clay pointed his finger at the man and asked his father about who he was. The father replied that it was the King of Meglin. King Carter asked King Meglin about whether he was joking, because they are friendly states and there can be no talk of any real battle. In response to this, the man said that their relationship is unfriendly because they did not act the way friends do. He also said that it was a big blow to his reputation and moreover, his bet did not play. Then King Carter begged the man to listen to him. He said that it was all because of that old man named Inel. It was he who insisted on such tactics and acted contrary to the instructions of the king. He also added that this has nothing to do with the official line of the Carter kingdom. Prince Carl turned to his father and said that it was very reasonable, since this old man should pay for ignoring the king's order, and there was no point in them bothering King Carter. Clay watched this and couldn't understand why this guy is a friend sided with Carter. After that, King Carter said that Prince Carl was right, because it was his mistake and the Carter kingdom would take care of all Meglin's lost funds. And as for Enel, he's already dead. Then the prince asked if he had a family and suggested that they should be responsible for his act. He also said that the corpse of General Enel is still lying in place and it can be taken to the central square in order to flagellate him. King Carter was scared and indignant when he heard these words, but the boy's father said that this was a great offer, and that's exactly what they would do. However, King Carter asked to be given some time to think. At that moment Clay intervened and said that this was unacceptable. After him, King Carter's brother intervened and said that General Enel is a hero of the Carter kingdom and they cannot allow something like this. However, the king ordered his brother Cesar to give up his body. In response to this, the boy shouted that this was an incredible stupidity. Clay asked the king if he really thought that if he allowed this, Meglin would let him go. The boy also added that if the king continues to treat the hero of his kingdom as well, he will become the laughing stock of the entire continent. In response to this, the king shouted angrily that this had nothing to do with Clay and he should not interfere in the affairs of his kingdom. However, the boy replied that he respected General Enel and while he was here, he would not allow him to be treated like that. Then the king again turned to his brother Cesir and ordered him to give Enel's body and flog him. In response to this, the man said that this would happen only over his dead body. The king of Meglin said that even his people don't listen to the great King Carter. He ordered Kessa to go and help him. He obeyed the order. The boy felt a very strong power and martial spirit. He assumed it was a holy sword. Dar and Kes got into a fight. Dar told his opponent that he was an old bastard and everything was as stupid as before. In response to this, the man said that his opponent was still a lover of meddling in his own affairs. Clay, who was watching this, realized that Kes is a master of the ice ball and it will not be easy to cope with such an opponent. Dar's opponent used the secret skill of the sword, namely the icy aura of battle. Shards of ice flew at the boy's father, and then turned him into an ice figure. Cassie laughed and told Dar that when you manage to defeat him with broken arms, then he also said that strength does not depend on the weapon used. But then why did he seem so vulnerable now? The man also added that the true power is the treasure in which it is contained. He also said that no matter how his opponent twisted with his dragon sword, he would never be compared to the sword of the ice god. Then Prince Carl shouted to Cassie to stop talking and had already finished off his opponent. At that moment, Clay laughed and asked them if they really wanted to kill his father. Then Prince Carl said that the gift was immobilized and he could not strike back in any way. However, the boy only smiled. At the moment when Cassie was preparing to deliver the last blow and had already said goodbye to the gift, he told him to remember something well. In the next life, when a man encounters someone who owns the best equipment, he should consider not getting into a fight. The man had already struck, but at that moment the ice melted and flew away from the gift. There was a lot of fire around him. The man said that no one could have thought that after so many years, Kessa would remain a worthless warrior who rely on good equipment. The man also told his opponent that he had been collecting good equipment for so many years to the ideal, but still did not understand the most important thing. The gift was a dragon armor under the protection of the God of Light, an amulet of praise of light and a sword of a poisonous dragon. Cassie asked the man about where he got so many jewels from. In response, Dar said that he had a very respectful and obedient son and asked his opponent if he was jealous of him. After that, Dar said that now he will show his opponent what a real attack is and he will never be compared to him. After that, the man used the power ejection technique and the blessing of the wind god. 
Cassie screamed in pain and said that Dar was a real monster. Carl called Kess a jerk because he is a master of the sword who rely only on their equipment, and there is nothing surprising in this. Clay laughed and said that it was he who had been doing nothing but babbling about his incredible treasures from the very beginning. The boy asked the prince if it was really so hard to admit defeat. The prince said that Meglin could not accept defeat for anything and he would not stand on ceremony. Carl ordered his subordinates to kill Dar. Dar replied that relying on numerical advantage was incredibly stupid, because they themselves were asking for trouble. The men defeated all their opponents. Clay watched with his father and said that apparently this cool ice technique can't even distinguish friends from enemies. The prince was angry because he understood that the situation was not in his favor. After that, he ordered his subordinate to attack Clay in order to distract Dar, because if Cassie loses, then nothing will help Meglin's reputation. The knight began to carry out the order. He told Clay that he did not dare to treat the young man so disrespectfully. Well, now he would teach him a lesson. In response to this, the guy said that this was a tactical miscalculation, because the prince was trying to intimidate the weak, because the strong did not see him point blank. After that, Dar laughed and offered his son to face off. He said that if a man dealt with this garbage first, then the boy would be at his disposal for a whole year. Clay agreed, but said that if he won, his father would no longer interfere in his affairs. At that moment, the boy's opponent intervened. He called him a baby and said that for looking down on him, he was finished. The boy dodged the blow in time and thought that if he used magic scrolls, it would be like a beating, not a battle, so he decided that he should do with just a sword. The boy also thought that this was a great opportunity to try out a new style of tai chi fighting. After Clay came to this world, he never once used his powers from the past world. Some time ago, he tried to combine Tai Chi techniques with magic, but there was no way to test the effectiveness of such a method yet, and now is the time. The guy also thought that there is very little spiritual energy in this world. However, the acupuncture points and the forces of people are still the same, and you just need to release the force wisely and then everything will work out, not by force, but by skill. Prince Carl watched Clay's actions and could not understand what he was doing. The guy thought that it didn't look like magic and he had never seen anything like it before. He also decided that this was impossible, because the boy could not defeat a whole group of people whose fighting power in many ways exceeds him. The prince couldn't figure out how Clay did it. Then the guy said that it was short-sighted, because these knights are no better than Kessa, who rely only on treasures. After that, the boy turned to Carl Meglin and said that today he was missing his lesson absolutely for free. He also said that they are both really part of the Great Four, but he is not like the prince. Carl shouted at the boy out of anger and said that he had no right to be so arrogant. After that, he ordered his subordinates to take the boy and added that he would generously reward whoever brought him Clay's head. The boy used a Tai Chi blade and made three moon rings. After that, he told his father that he was almost finished and if the man did not hurry up, he would have a hard time. In response, Dar said that if he lost to his son, it would be a disgrace in front of the entire continent. Then he shouted at his opponents and told me to run away from him, because if he gets another flight from his own son, he will be very angry. In response to this, the opponents of the gift said that they certainly would not run away, because they are not idiots. After that, the man said that he would need a couple more strokes and everything would be over, but his opponents forced him and now he is really angry. The knights of the Meglin kingdom realized that their opponent was accumulating energy. They decided to take advantage of this hitch and kill him. Clay, who was watching all this, noted that his father has a very powerful aura and it is strikingly different from the one that was a moment earlier. The boy decided that his father decided to take what was happening seriously. Then Dar decided to use a secret technique of the dragon blood family called the Sad Slaughter of the Holy Dragon. Edward shouted to Dar to stop and asked Clay to install his father too, since if he uses this technique now, they will not be able to win the upcoming battle. The boy wondered why the king was so nervous and what was wrong with this technique. Edward hid behind a pillar and thought that with so many victims, problems with Meglin were provided for them. Clay created a dome of vines that stole it from the dragon's fire. Prince Carl ran to his father to make sure he was okay. The people who were sitting in the stands did not believe that a person could have such power and said that this power was comparable to the power of the sword god. After a while, everything calmed down. Prince Carl turned to Dar Longsu and told him to think what he was doing, because it looks like he wants to declare war on Meglin. However, Clay answered him and said that it was the prince who provoked the battle, because it was he who ordered his subordinates to attack. The guy turned to Clay and was about to say something to him, but suddenly his nose started bleeding. 
The boy's father immediately decided that Clay had done it. However, the boy said that he didn't do anything at all and all this happened because of receiving internal injuries. King Meglin asked Edward to say something, but he couldn't do anything. He just awkwardly rubbed the back of his head and said that Prince Carl really lacks experience, and in a fight between two swordsmen, it is impossible to do without injuries of victims. Clay was surprised that the king gave at least some adequate answer after so much time. The boy turned to his majesty King Amenglan and said that he should be grateful for the fact that as his father's goal was Kessa, and not his son, otherwise he would not have gotten off so easily now. Eduard told Meglin that she should better help her son as soon as possible, otherwise if something happens to him, they are not responsible for it. The king took his son in his arms and told Edward that he would remember it to him later, and was not finished. He also said that the Swordmaster Mach, who is also known as Earthstrike, is under his command and next time he will make Edward and the Dragon Blood family pay for it with their lives. In response to this, Edward said that this arrangement suits him because Stormwind is not Carter and they like distinctions. Clay was surprised that as it turned out Stormwind is not inferior to Meglin in strength if he, like the king, made concessions, it would definitely hit Meglin's reputation. At that moment, Cassie grabbed his king by the hem of his robe. He begged his majesty to save him, because he even risked his life for Meglin. Clay looked at this and thought that perhaps he could have been saved if the three cardinals, endangering their lives, jointly used forbidden spells of the twelfth rank. Therefore, it was the end for Kessa. The king of Meglin picked up a knife and plunged it into Kessa's head. Clay was taken aback by what he saw. Then the king said that the warrior Meglin sent was killed by his hand and it wasn't the gift of Longsu from Stormwind that killed him, so this time it's a draw. Edward smiled and praised the king's self-esteem, because even in such a situation he is still not ready to admit defeat. Clay, at the same time, thought that even though Casey was not a good person, but it could only be worse from me for something to live in order to preserve my self-esteem. After that, the boy approached his father. He told him that he could already get out of the fighting stance because everyone had left. But the boy's father stood motionless. Then Clay touched him, but the man fell to the ground unconscious. After that, Edward shouted for someone to call a doctor. After a while, General Dar was in his room. He was getting dressed after a doctor's examination, who said that the man was just weak, and otherwise there were no problems. He just needed to rest a little. After that, the doctor left the room. Clay and the king were glad to hear this news. The boy approached his father and said that it turns out he just overdid it, and he was already getting upset. The king who looked at it realized that Clay apparently doesn't even know anything about family techniques. The king said that the sad life of the holy dragon is a divine skill that was passed down by the two sword gods, the boy's ancestors, to the dragon blood family. If it were not for the numerous artifacts of the gift, it would be what if he had remained alive after this reception at all. The king asked Dar about how long his recovery would last. The man replied that if we take into account the overspending of spiritual energy and physical fatigue, then he will need about three months. The king was indignant. He shouted at Dar and said that the results of the future battle of Stormwind depended on him and that a written notification of the beginning of hostilities from Meglin was already knocking on the door and he said that he needed three months to recover. Eduard said that his general wants positive things for the whole continent. He asked him about why it was necessary to use this technique against one opponent. In response, the man said that he did it because he and Clay had an argument and he couldn't lose to his own son. After that, the king yelled at the boy and said that in that case he and his crazy subordinate would take responsibility for it. The boy was surprised and said that his berserker had suffered a lot from seasickness during transportation, and he was still adapting. After that, the king panicked and could not think of what to do. At that moment, it was announced that the envoy of the Legion of Light had arrived on a visit. The king was surprised and told the guards to let him in as soon as possible. At that moment, the king remembered and wondered how he could forget about such a trump card up his sleeve, because if Lena West helps him, then it will be easier to defeat Meglin. At that moment, a woman entered the room. She bowed and said that she was the commander of the Legion of Light Sasha and she welcomed his majesty the King of Stormwind. The king laughed and was delighted and greeted the girl. He also noted that, as expected, Lena West's subordinates are beautiful and strong. Dar was surprised when he saw Sasha. In response to this, the girl said that she and General Dar had not seen each other for a long time. After that, she said that she was here on the orders of Lena West and invited Dar and Baron Clay to the Holy Mountain. After that, Dar said that it turns out his mother wants to see him, so he went to get ready. Clay thought that according to the rumors, only during the election of the goddess can you get to the holy mountain. 
It turns out that the Legion of Light is located there. The boy has long wanted to see this place with his own eyes. In addition, he became at least curious about the relationship between his father and this girl. In the holy capital, Dar and Sasha were heading to the holy mountain. Clay trudged after them with the last of his strength. The boy asked his father to wait and was surprised that his father could remain so cheerful, because he had used up all his strength in the last battle. The boy said that he was here as the third extra and as soon as they returned, he would tell his mother about everything. Clay also said that his physical strength is running out and he cannot perform the Golden Lotus ritual. A seventh rank scroll may be quite valuable, but it's still better than dying of exhaustion. With these words, the boy took out a secret scroll of the seventh rank from his spatial ring, which gave him strength. After a while, the boy stood and looked at some runes on the ground. He said that they tell the story of the holy mountain. It turned out that the palace of the Pope and the temple of the goddess are located on the top of the mountain, and in order to get there, first you need to go through the possessions of twelve cardinals. On the reverse side is the Inquisition. This is the forbidden part of the holy mountain. There is also a localized legion that has 400,000 people. The boy saw a huge sculpture in front of him and was surprised by its power. The boy realized that he was really in the holy capital. At this time Sasha and Dar were saying goodbye. The girl said that she could only take her to this place and that the commander was waiting inside. The girl also added that it was very nice to see Dar again. The man was embarrassed and said that he was also very pleased. At that moment, his son approached the man and asked about when his father had been in a relationship with Sasha. The father replied that they were just friends, but the boy did not believe him. At that moment, someone's voice was heard from the door. He asked Dar to come inside as soon as possible. The man announced to his mom that it was him and his son Clay with him. After that, they entered the room. The man immediately met the menacing gaze of his mother, who was dissatisfied with the fact that he was late. Dar hesitated and began to apologize. However, the girl quickly changed her tone and said that she was no longer angry and wanted to see her famous grandson as soon as possible. The boy greeted his grandmother and said that his name was Clay. He also added that dad told him a lot about his grandmother, but he would never have thought that she was so young and beautiful. The boy also added that he brought a bottle of honey from Amethyst Bees as a gift, but now he sees how beautiful grandma is and it seems to him that she probably won't need it. However, the woman was still very grateful to her grandson for such a gift and said that the boy was much better than his father. The woman hugged her grandson and said that she really likes him. Suddenly he realized that grandma was using pressure. She wants to look into the boy's soul in order to see his intentions. The boy noted that his grandmother is very strong. Her village is already comparable to the power of the sword god. However, the boy noted that it is not so easy to deal with him, because he has been improving his mental strength for thousands of years before rebirth. At that moment, the boy's father started coughing. The grandmother approached her son and asked him why he was so weak that he could not withstand even such a small pressure. In response to this, the man said that he was wounded. The woman replied that his son was quite an interesting person. She also added that she thought he could surprise only with sweet speeches, but it turned out that he was so strong. Grandma said it was pretty good and he went all in it. After that, she said she would take the honey of the amethyst bees as a thank you for helping Clay settle things with the Siwan family. The boy's father heard about it for the first time and immediately asked him about what he had done. In response to this, the boy said that they had a little quarrel and they even challenged him to a duel, but after that she had not heard any news from them yet. And Chaz was very angry with the boy and asked him about how he could do this. In response to this, Clay said that they were just two losers with scanty strength. However, the boy's father replied that this was nonsense, because the Siwan family enjoyed the patronage of four elemental gods and no magic weaker than the ninth rank can harm them. Even the scrolls of a boy of the seventh rank and how much for me. Dar also added that it was good that his grandmother intervened, because if he seriously angered their family, he would not even notice how he would die. It is not surprising that the grandmother decided to test her grandson. At that moment, the woman intervened in the conversation and said that it was all in the past, they needed to forget about it. She also added that the Siwan family has always been so arrogant, so it's good that at least someone lost a lesson to them. The boy thanked his grandmother and said that he would never have thought that there could be such serious problems because of this. The grandmother replied to the boy that everything was fine, because as long as he had her, no one would dare to offend him. After that, the grandmother called her grandson to her and said that she had something for the boy. She let him into her treasury. Grandma said that he gave her such a valuable gift, so she should repay in kind. The woman said that her grandson can choose whatever he wants. The boy was very surprised, because such treasures cannot be found in the public domain. 
There were also a bunch of spatial rings. The boy didn't know what to do because she wanted to take everything. At some point, a book caught his attention. It was a legendary dark manuscript. The boy picked up the book and told his grandmother that he wanted to take it. At that moment, grandma sighed heavily and said that she had completely forgotten about her. She said it was a very dangerous thing and the boy should choose something else, and the grandmother would even be allowed to take a few things. However, the boy began to run away from her, laughed and reminded her that the grandmother should keep her word. Then the woman got angry and asked the boy if he knew at least a little about this book. Clay replied that he certainly knows about this book, because he didn't just sit in his pants at the Academy of Magic. The boy said that this book contains all the existing spells related to dark magic. A powerful lick is also printed inside. The boy said that he wanted to take this particular book, just because he knows what it is. 